evening everybody. I'm Ben Brubaker. I'm here at the Elkhart Model Railroad Club and tonight I'm going to um, talk about my 3D printing setup and how you might use this as a model railroader. So here we go. So I have a presentation queued up here and so 3D printing for model railroaders. Um, I talked to Jim about making a 3D printing for dummies but we decided to go with model railroaders instead. Because we are dummies. Because we all kind of knew what was going on. Okay so here's what I'm going to talk about tonight. Um, why you might use a 3D printer, different types that you might use as a hobbyist, the materials, the process, the post-processing, where you can get your source materials, because that seems to be a question like, where do I find the files? So, how can a 3D printer help model railroading? So, the biggest thing is you can make custom parts. So custom parts like locomotive shells, like, um, I know some of you guys like to modify existing stuff and make custom parts, you can make detailed parts, period details. Um, number two, you get a lower cost part, potentially. You do have to buy the equipment. There is some cost involved, but potentially a lower cost, especially if you belong to a club that had a 3D printer. could cost less. <coughs> Rapid prototyping. And extra income potential as a model railroader. And so here is um, some of the stuff that I have 3D modeled here for the club. The inside of the switch tower. So everything that you see except for the two figures, I 3D modeled inside that switch tower. So two types of printers that you might come across if you're doing your research online. There's two types, there's, there's lots of printers out there, but there's two main types of printers. One is a DLP, which stands for digital light printing. The other, and so let me kind of go over this. This uses light to harden a resin. This is also the one I'm demonstrating tonight is a DLP. Um, it has a higher detail and resolution, requires some post-processing, which means you have to like clean the part, cure the part. Um, the parts are brittle or can be brittle, depending on what the resin you're using. The other type that's very common out there is an FDM or fused deposition modeling. This is the one that uses the plastic filament, so like a string. Now, the plastic is usually PLA or ABS. There's a few other plastics you can get, but those are the two common ones. Lower detail and resolution, although still pretty decent resolution. The parts are ready right off the printer. So once you print it, you take it out, it's good to go. Um, the FDM is really popular with um, guys in like motorsports because you can mock up brackets and things and take it right off and put it right on the engine to see if it fits. Um, the DLP is more for like uh, modeling and figures and scale modeling things. So this is the uh, DLP. This is the style we're doing here. So there's a resin vat and a build plate, and we're using light, where this is the FDM that uses the filament, so a heated nozzle to build up the filament. They both have their pros and cons, but the one I'm demonstrating tonight is the DLP, digital light processing. Uh, there's another one that's very similar called SLP, selective laser, SLS, selective laser centering, which uses a laser as opposed to a light source, a little different. So here's the materials you need to do this type of printing. So you're going to need obviously a computer and let's we'll start here. You're going to need a printer. Um, so my setup is about $300 for my whole setup. So you need a printer. Uh, you're going to need resin. Uh, the resin is about $30. A $30 for the large for the large one here is about $30. Um, you're going to need a computer and a jump drive or USB drive or some way to transfer the files back and forth. You're going to need some kind of a uh, solvent, so alcohol. I'm using 90% isopropyl alcohol. Uh, I get this at Meyer for a couple bucks. A quart is pretty pretty good deal, actually. Um, you can also use ethyl alcohol, uh, which you can buy at Lowe's and Home Depot. Um, there's other things you can use. Um, some people use Simple Green. I'm actually using a combination of Simple Green and alcohol tonight. I'll show you that. Uh, you're going to need paper towels because it's messy. And you're gonna need some kind of a, a vat or a bucket or something to kind of clean your parts off in, and a putty knife or a scraper. Those are your basic components to get you started. Uh, there's more things you can buy, but these are the basic things you need to get started. Uh, like any other hobby, the more stuff you get, the more space it takes. You know, you can quickly buy exotic stuff and get out of control. So basic materials, and I think I brought most of these with me here tonight because I was gonna demonstrate the process. I'm gonna show you all that. It's also highly suggested that you wear PPE. Um, 
Because this is an educational video, I will be trying to wear this when it's appropriate, but I don't generally wear this at home because, um, let's be honest, you guys have, based in your, in your current jobs or former jobs, you've had your hands with some nasty things. This isn't that bad. But you should wear appropriate equipment where necessary. Okay, so here's the process. You find a uh, STL file. Either you make your own or you find one online or you have someone make one for you. An STL file, that is a CAD file that has been converted into a solid model. So if you draw it up in CAD, it's been converted into a solid cubic model. You put it into a software program called a slicer that slices it into layers. And the layers are then made into G-code that goes to the printer, which does the printing. That's the basic process. And so what's happening here is the printer's running. Is this printing one layer at a time, which are the slices that came out of the software, which I'll demonstrate here in a second. So it goes through this process. The, uh, the more mass or volume you have here, the more slices it has, the longer it takes to print. The, more sli the finer the slices, the more detail you have, the thicker the slices, the less detail, the resolution. You can adjust that on some printers as well. If you want to print faster, you print thicker layers. I think that all makes sense. So here's the basic process of DLP printing. You have a projector or a light source. In some really cheap ones, it's literally a cell phone. You have some kind of a light source um, that's going to project a light onto the membrane, and that membrane is going to harden the resin. The resin becomes a layer. And so the light source projects the shape on or the slice onto the PEM membrane, and then the photosensitive resin hardens. It's UV resin. This stuff hardens, it says on the bottle, 405 nanometers, so UV spectrum, light. So black light would harden this. Sunshine will harden this because it's part of the natural spectrum. Some fluorescent light bulbs will, but, you know, so it's, it's, it's not terrible to work with. You wouldn't want to do it outside. It would harden real fast. Um, the build tray moves up and down and allows for space for the next layer. And that's what you hear going on on there. So it's just a, just a stepper motor. And this goes up and down, up and down. Um, I think I have it set for two seconds of exposure. And by the time it goes up and down, it's probably five seconds total per layer. And that's going to determine how long it takes to print. Um, the layers are fused together as they harden. So each layer fuses to the layer before it to make a solid, solid model. Questions on that? I'll have room for questions at the end. That'll make it easier for you to edit out. So this requires post-processing, so you have to do something after you're done printing. And so uh, the, the basic process is you're going to wash it in isopropyl alcohol to get the excess resin off, the unhardened resin. You want to get rid of the unhardened resin because once you harden it, it becomes a solid shape. So you want to get the extra goop off. And then you have to remove it from any support structures or any um, stands or anything you have in there. And then you're going to cure it with UV light. And so you can use a UV light source or you can go outside and put in sunshine. If you live in northern Indiana, you should buy a UV light source because as you know, sunshine is rare, especially in winter time. So you can buy just a black light and do it with that. Okay, so where do I get my STLs? Where do I find them? Um, so I, I found a couple sites here that I wanted to highlight. So we'll start with the free ones here. So the one that I've been using a lot is Thingiverse. It's easy to navigate. It's free. Um, there's some really good stuff on there. There's some not so great stuff. There's some good stuff on there. I'm going to put my stuff on Thingiverse when I get around to it. I'm just going to post all my stuff out there. So assuming this works and it does, we have internet. Good. So um, you go here and you just, uh, you don't even need to sign up, but if you sign up, you can save your stuff as you're going. Some of you nodding may have used this before. So we just type in HO scale. You can find parts that are, here's a bunch of military vehicles that are, that are 100 scales. So that'd be double O, right? Um, here's a excavator. Here's a container. Here's a front end loader. Here's some structures, um, you know, some water towers. Here's a VW bug. Here's a ballast spreader, some playground equipment. You can find different things on there pretty easy. Um, you click on it and you download it, you have the file. They're free to use. Um, because they're free, they're not guaranteed to be perfect. There could be some flaws, they may not print well. 
you kind of look at the reviews on it to see if there's any, maybe someone said that this doesn't work that great. So there's that, there's option one. Um, another one that I've been using is Cults 3D. Um, this one is, is free and pay, so it's both free and pay. And so here you can see, here's a dumpster. This one has some structures. So it's got a little, I think these are maybe higher quality models on this one because it is a, also a, a pay site. And so these are all pretty much free. But if I come down here, uh, like here's some oil barrels that someone wants a dollar or 11 cents for, for the file. That's not bad, a dollar. Here's some pallets, someone wants a dollar for the pallets. Here's a, a dumpster, they want a dollar 65. Uh, this one's free. Here's a barber chair. I don't know why you need a barber chair, but there you go. So there's some free stuff. Um, if you want to go out there to like Etsy, you can pay for them, or eBay, you can pay for them. And so here's Etsy. These are HO scale STLs. Of course, obviously, you can do the same thing for N scale or S scale or O scale or, you know, 164 scale if you're doing that, that size. So that's how most of you will probably find your stuff as you go out and you'll either pay for it or you'll download it. Um, I like to make my own because I have access to CAD at school and sometimes I have free time on my hands.